Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Yo, the marketing director here at Apex Wheels, and welcome to the channel. Some of you guys have recently seen that we've just launched our new fully forged sprint line of wheels. We've done a technical overview of all the features of that wheel. You can go check out that video in the description or the card above. In this video, we are going to focus on true motorsport blanks that are the foundation of the sprint line and what ultimately made them possible. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to recognize wheels that are made from cheaper blanks that compromise on features which can negatively impact your fitment or performance. With me to help explain all that is our founder and CEO, Eddie Pintacci. Welcome to the channel, Eddie. Thanks for having me. Um, so how does Apex define a true motorsport blank compared to, let's say, a street blank? Yeah, so we define that as a forging blank that allows an engineer to design a wheel that has all the features that they would want in a motorsport wheel. Um, you know, we kind of nickname other blanks that can't do that as like a street blank uh, because the majority of wheels are more about, you know, fashion and other things like that. And, you know, although they might, you know, fit on an application, uh, there can be all sorts of compromises if the blank itself uh, you know, wasn't designed from the get-go to accommodate those critical features that are usually only necessary in a motorsport application. Cool. So, like, what, what kind of features are, are needed in an application for motorsports? So, uh, barrel clearance can be a really big priority because if you can't clear a caliper, it's, the wheel's never getting on the car in the first place, right? Uh, and often you're forced to upsize in diameter to, to solve that, but that can have a really big impact on the type of tire you can run. Uh, you know, you don't wanna be running, you know, 19 inch Hoosiers, you know, when you could have been on 18s or, or something like that, right? Um, and additionally, there are things that people will not think about as critically, which will be like the amount of material in an inner lip uh, you need material there, you know, to add strength. Um, and in a motorsport environment, it's usually a lot more material than you would see on a street wheel uh, because of the, you know, impacts that are like expected in that application. Uh, and then there are a lot of things that have to do with the spokes where, you know, if the material is limited and thin there, you're going to be limited on how you can shape that spoke. Um, and that's going to affect things like, you know, the potential for load rating, the, again, caliper clearances. And then an extremely obvious one is simply just the width of the wheel itself. You know, uh, take a Corvette. There are guys that, you know, like 13 inch wheels for that application. Uh, but if a die is limited to an 11 and a half or something like that, you know, you'll see a manufacturer just sell 11 and a half inch wheels because that's all they can make you know uh, and even though say 13 would have been the right size for that particular application they're just they're not offering it if a street blank can't go to that width so we made sure that the motorsport blanks you know do all these aggressive really track oriented wide widths so it's pretty clear that you need to have a good blank to have a good feature rich motorsport wheel for everyone out there who doesn't know what a blank is, can you tell me what the blank is a blank? Yeah, so uh, a blank is basically the canvas from which you can, you know, design and, and, and make a wheel, right? And so uh, all our forged wheels start from a blank. These blanks are uh, basically a wheel with no spoke profile to them. They're like a flat disc, right? Uh, they are created from 6061 uh, extruded aluminum. You know, it looks like maybe a foot tall log of aluminum, like if you cut a telephone pole or something like that. And that gets pressed under 10,000 tons of pressure in a die, right? And that die, it takes, uh, you put it through three presses because each press makes a little bit more of a change to the, to the shape of that uh, so that way you can go from that like log to uh, this base starting point you know of a wheel and uh, 
that's what we then take, put into a big CNC machine and, you know, spend many hours machining the spoke profiles out of. So you can make anything from a five spoke wheel to a hundred spoke wheel, you know, any design will come from that. Got it. So it's essentially all of the material that you get to play with when you're starting to design and manufacture a wheel. Exactly. You know, and you're limited to what you can make based on the shape of that blank, right? So if you have a blank for 18 by 10 inches, you know, that's what you can make from that, right? Uh, so it's key if you want to have a lot of uh, sizes and things like that, that you have to make blanks for, for everything. So it sounds like you need a motorsport blank to make a feature rich motorsport wheel. Why would a manufacturer then choose a street blank to make a motorsport wheel? It really depends on what their goals are. Uh, if their goal is to come to market really quickly and there aren't off the shelf motorsport blanks available to them, uh, then they cannot afford the time investment to make their own. So they're going to compromise and they're just going to use the closest blank that kind of fits the shape that they're trying to make. You know, so they'll give up on some features, maybe clearance, maybe lip strength, you know, certain sizes, something like that. But they're going to they're going to have a wheel quickly, right? Uh, the other place that a manufacturer might be obligated to to save uh, is if they're really trying to have a low price for their wheels, right? There's a trend to try and make forged wheels a lot cheaper. And the easiest way to do that is to just buy the cheapest blanks. Uh, you know, you can skip the R&D cost of, you know, making your own. Uh, you can skip the higher unit price that comes from a motorsport blank. For example, our blanks weigh around 120 pounds a piece versus a typical blank that might weigh around 90 pounds. And that extra weight comes from us having metal in all the right places uh, to be able to have that high clearance, have that stronger inner lip. It's all machined off and you know becomes a lightweight wheel in the end, but there's just more metal that goes in the recycle bin, basically, to, to get to our end point. Uh, last but not least, you know, they're going to want to avoid the capital investment, you know, you know to make the dies that make these blanks. At $100,000 a piece and many blanks being needed, you know, it could be a million dollars, you know, of investment to, you know, to do it properly. And so if someone is, again, out there to, to have a low cost wheel, these are things that you would avoid and so that's where the compromises come from. So it sounds like there's a lot of investment whether it's time, cost or otherwise. Why would Apex then go ahead and sink that initial investment in to make our own motorsport blanks? Yeah we are not out there to make the lowest price wheel possible. We've always really liked you know a good value mix, a feature you know rich wheel. You know we are not a premium boutique wheel and we like to bring a lot of value through volume production but we're really proud of like great features in a wheel and so it was you know a line in the sand for us of just like you know we're we're gonna go this way when it comes to making you know forged wheels we're gonna do everything we can to make things the way that we want it to because blanks were not available off the shelf for us we just made the commitment to you know designing our own. So it seems like a lot of work for this project. You know, how long did this actually take? It took two years from when we first announced our forged wheels to finish the dies. Uh, we had already put work in well before then uh, to, you know, modify dies and, and do all the things that we wanted to, to make those wheels. Uh, but it was clear that there was a lot more work to hit all the designs, all the fitments that we needed. You know, that that's the hard part is the engineers have to pre-think about everything we want to do for the next five to 10 year roadmap and make sure that those dies can accommodate that. And we a little bit underestimated the amount of work that would go into that. Uh, when we saw that it would take more time to do the project justice, uh, you know, the only two options were to 
compromise and you know bring some wheels to market using off-the-shelf blanks uh, that you know wouldn't be in the widths that we wanted or wouldn't have some of the features that we wanted or to just delay them and uh, you know bring them out when they're right and you know we opted to bring wheels to market when they were what we wanted them to be and you know so it, it was painful to you know basically cancel the 19 inch wheels that we had announced and for two years to to have nothing so is the hard part done then like what else does the future hold for apex yeah luckily we don't have to go through the last two years of r d every time we make a new wheel line uh, we have a lot of stuff in the queue there are other designs that are going to be coming out in the sprint line uh, and we have other lines that cater to other needs. You know, um, we have a lot of things that are, you know, being brainstormed and flushed out, but the motorsport blanks give us the potential if we desire to make an ultralight wheel, to make a really heavy duty endurance wheel, uh, and to, you know, make street wheels that actually have, you know, motorsport functions added to them that typically wouldn't be there. So there's a lot of potential, a lot of opportunity. You know, we, we see things that we could do for, for many years into the future. Oh, that's awesome. That's super exciting. If you're a track enthusiast, I'm super excited to have joined the team when we are about to release so many more wheels for the enthusiasts out there. So I want to thank you for joining us, Eddie, yeah, thank um, you. and answering the questions that we had for today. I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, let us know if you guys have any comments or questions or what else you want to see us talk about in our next Q&A, maybe with Eddie, maybe with some of our engineers in-house. Uh, until then, I'm Yo with Apex. I'll see you on the next one.